you'd like to sit down for a few minutes, please. I did mention earlier on that the coffin would be open. That is not going to happen now. So my apologies for that. So we meet today, and last night as well, the Father Albert, a parish priest in Blackbird Hill, is here for a service. And many of you were at that service as well. And he made much of the life of Michael and the family, and rightly so. With me today is Father Eusebio of India, who has been helping out at the parish now and then at weekends, the 930 Mass. He is from Goa. And also, I've lost the big father, Admiral, from the Bell Hill Fathers, the Vincentian Father as well. So he's here as well to pay tribute to Michael. But we're not just celebrating a life. Within the Catholic tradition, we celebrate death. And that's a hard one for us. We celebrate the fact that Michael has died, even though it has been shocking and young, that in death we move into, whether our death is early or late, we move through into the fullness of life of God. And much of the prayer last night with Father from, from the parish in Blackbird Hill, Father Albert, was about emphasizing that as well. But you know what I know, when something sudden happens as it did with Michael's death, many of us were in shock, and you'll see in many of the tributes there from the various members of family and friends about the sudden shock of hearing that. And yes, rightly so, we should be shocked. But then we go to a deeper level and we look for the purpose. The purpose in his death. In his death. So I'll say a little bit more of that later on uh, at the humble. So we meet today with sorrow in our hearts. We meet also in thankfulness. We come with grief. Because the one that we love, particularly Alera and her family, is no longer among us. They come also in gratitude, in praise, in tribute to the life of Michael. We come in sorrow, <coughs> confronting the fact that life ends. This is a condition of our birth. That at the end of the road, near or far, stands always our death. And all the generations have had to bear this heavy truth. So the need that is upon us is the need to accept both the glory and the tragedy of life, its holiness and its limits. The love of the human heart is the most real and the most beautiful of all the realities we know. It's the richest gift we have. It is the love that joins us together as lovers, as husband and wife, as father and mother, parent and child, and as friends and neighbors. Whatever the length of time may be, to have known something of this is to have experienced the supreme privilege of being human. The anguish of parties cannot destroy this most real of all realities. The love has been, the affection has existed, the ties have been woven, life has been shared, the joys and the sorrows. And this has been as real and strong as anything in life. The love that was once born, Michael, had never died. For it's become part of our lives, your life, woven into the very texture of your being. 
So here and now we bear witness to the Michael we knew in life, who now in death leaves a subtle part, precious and love, which will be with us in different ways, in truth and beauty, in dignity and courage, and love to the end of our days. So now we pray, great God of Jesus Christ, we know that for you in death, life is changed, not ended. Despite our faith in the promise of new life, the changes brought about by the death of Michael causes us grief, pain, loneliness, depression, even anger and emptiness, and perhaps even guilt and shame and remorse. These are all natural feelings to have when someone dies. As Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus, so weak because of our own loss, as the disciples on the road to Emmaus were numb and in shock because of Jesus' death, so we too have found times when we may wander aimlessly beside our own grief. And as the apostles huddled in fear behind locked doors after Jesus' death, so we too may be afraid of the many things because of the loss of Michael. So we pray, strong and almighty God, through Christ, to be with us at this time, Support us through all the confusion feelings we experience in our grief and our mourning. Enable us to be patient with ourselves when the pain returns, and confer within us a living faith in your abiding presence, which will always be with us today and forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So now I have the first reading with Mother Sola is going to have our first reading. First reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You shall stay with the Lord forever. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have an advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up into the clouds together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you shall comfort one another. This is the word of the Lord.
shall walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are the crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. You have prepared a bank of food in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with my oil, my cup is overflowing with response. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Response. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for, for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. It is Christ who died, rather, was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No. In all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Many of you, I'm sure, and I've got it at my hands on this coffin here, on my coffin. 
And all the memories are here, and many of you who are able to perhaps speak or write of those memories you have of Michael. But the reason why you're here, you think about three weeks ago, you didn't plan to be in St. Patrick's Church. Some of you didn't know what St. Patrick's Church was. You didn't plan to be here. But something happened to a person that bringing you here says something about Michael. In the many myriad different ways, his influence on all of us has had an effect is why you're here. And that influence, hopefully, we will carry with us, particularly for all of us who are people of faith, that trying to understand the why of Michael's death isn't really a good road to go down. Michael's death, that's a fact. The why of it, the medical reports will say of the why of it, but others will say, why at this age, not even 60 years of age? <clears throat> and some of our readings address that. <clears throat> I want to just go back to some of the tributes in here. I won't read any of them, but I will give my tribute like Michael. Now, I remember Michael, I'm the parish priest here, by the way, Father Patrick. And the family here, or a body or family, have been part of this parish for many, many years. The girls and the boys grew up here. They have their first communion here. They have their congregations here. Also service. Also as well, being involved in the parish as catechists, helping out for the youth, the kids. A learner a reader in our parish here for many, many years. I was here 17 years. She was here before I arrived. Alara is our safeguarding officer in the parish as well. So the life that they celebrate in this parish with Michael says something about the body of Christ and who we are. And I'll come to that in a moment. But I remember Michael at our first parish fete, and Leslie, where is Leslie behind the summer? Leslie, a good friend of Michael, would tell me about this. <coughs> we have our parish fete on the last Sunday in June. We just had it just a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> and how our parish fete works is all the various national groups. So here we have Nigeria, Ghana, the Philippines, Hungary, Egypt, India. <coughs> and other groups. They set up a table, they put up an awning, they cook food and bring it in and we share it with each other. And that is a sign of, in the middle of the diversity of the various <coughs> groups that we talked about, and also the different cultures, that our faith that we are one in Christ brings us to that. So that together we celebrate and we don't allow the differences to get in the way of the oneness of us all in Christ. For the first thing, <clears throat> the music was playing, some were up dancing. Now I'm going to try and do it here, but I don't do it very well. I think it's called the Nigerian Shuffle. You know the Nigerian Shuffle? <laughs> you know, you don't really move, you just... So Michael says to me, Father, and I'm saying, what Michael? And he says, come on, join in. So I go over, and both Michael and Leslie show me how to do the Nigerian shot. <coughs> now, that says something about Michael, who invites me in to what's important for him. It also says something about me that I'm willing to move into that, which is a bit strange, I've never done a Nigerian shock before. Well, I've done a few more that varies other faiths since then. And in the middle of that, mentioned here by his son, is Michael Blatt. 
he had a lock, which is a belly lock, which when it opened up, it just his body shook with that lock. And so that's one of the many memories I have of Michael. Many tributes have been written here. You will have your memories as well. <coughs> but I just want to shift it a little bit. We as Christians and as Catholics celebrate death. It may be a strange thing to say. All our Eucharist, which we will celebrate shortly, is about celebrating Christ's death so that we hopefully in the growing into our understanding of the purpose of that, we see the purpose of our own deaths. And as the opening prayer said, whether soon or late in life, whatever our length of time, our death has a purpose. Because in Christ, we hear in the reading we heard of the Gospel, that Christ put an end to physical death. We will have a physical loss. We are human. We will grieve. We will get angry, perhaps. Or we will get confused. A whole range of emotions will be at play for us around death. But for us, the onus is on us, and the responsibility is on us, to grow into an awareness in the middle of all of those emotions I've mentioned, that this death has a purpose. And what's the purpose? God has called Michael to God's self. So Michael is with God. However we understand that, he is with God. And so in one sense, we, can, we hand him over to that truth and leave him with that truth. We hold on to the memories of him, yes, but we hold on to that truth that he is with God, the source of all life and all love, the source that you and I come from, and the source that we will return to. So the onus is on us, not a burden, but an onus. For us, particularly as people of faith, and none, I speak to you as well, wherever you are coming from, to think seriously about your own lives, to carry with you the life of Michael. It has brought you here. Let Michael's life be with you in your heart as you continue your journey to your own deaths, sooner or later. So that then we know that moving through death in Christ as we celebrated Easter, and this candle here reminds us of that, that death has no hold over us. It's called the Easter candle. On Easter day, after Good Friday, after Jesus' death, this is brought into a darkened church, and the deacon or person sings, the light of Christ that has conquered death and darkness. And that's it here. When Michael was baptized, an Easter candle was lit. Not this particular one, because he wasn't baptized in this church. But when he was baptized, an Easter candle was lit. And the baptismal candle was lit from the Easter candle, and the parents, and the godparents of the child, in Michael's case, his family, his parents and friends, held that candle, lit from the Easter candle, to say clearly that this new life, new born, Michael, nearly 60 years ago, begins his journey into the understanding of the meaning of life and love through the Christian Catholic faith. And he did that well. And so it's lit again at the beginning of life, our earthly lives, at the end of our earthly lives, reminding us of him who is now going to God. And so we continue our journeys. You will leave here. You will carry with you, perhaps, the booklet that has been produced with all those many tributes. But you will have your own thoughts and feelings as well. 
So do not allow yourselves to lose those. They will dim, they will drop away, as life to us off. But at this moment we hold in our hearts the life of Michael, the death of Michael, where he are gathered, and we celebrate the fact that he is now fully with God in life and in love, our source and our being. And so, as we hear in this church, moving to the Eucharist, where we will hear very clearly, for those who are not familiar with it, we will hear very clearly the prayer of calling down the Holy Spirit to make present Jesus yet again in our Eucharist, to remember that in and through his death, he had his resurrection through the Father. And so I ask you to hear and listen to those prayers prayfully, and in the doing so, give thanks to God. If you have known a man called Michael, who brought you here this day, We pray for Michael, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We give thanks for the love, love which Michael showed during his life. May he know the perfection and fulfillment of that love in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For all who mourn today, that they will receive strength to assist them in their sadness and grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For the sick, that they may be given strength to cope and comfort in times of suffering. We also pray for those who care for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We remember all who have died. May they enjoy the promise of eternal happiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray with Mary, our mother, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hear, O Lord, the prayers of those who call upon you, for Michael and the souls of all your servants. May they be released from all their sin and be sharers of your redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have the offertory payment during the hymn that we have to collect as well.
Check this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, not of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to her that is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. We may be allowed to just pray to the Lord and we her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Michael, whom we have called from this world to yourself. When that he who was united with your son in the death like he may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in the mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy, and once more we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be go past to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through the Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, our God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray now with confidence in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, and by the hand of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the glory of God, Amen. Lord and Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your people, and graciously grant them peace and unity, in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. The Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter all the violence, but only say the word, and thy soul shall be healed. 
May the body of love Christ bring us to everlasting life. For communion, uh, Father Adbo and Father Eusebia will come down here first. They will offer communion to the family where you are seated, as you see. And then they'll come to the head of Michael's coffin, and then all of you come forward, uh, come forward and come around and move down to your place down the side aisle.
mamusika Bobi sestra i ljudi. Sorry for my real part this yesterday, but um, you know, just for the sake of this who were not here yesterday. Michael Oluboyega, or Imabui, was born on the 11th of March 1965 at Lambeth Hospital, Kennington, London, where his mom worked, our mom worked as a midwife at the time. Michael is from a staunch Catholic family and was baptized at St. Wilfred's Church, Catholic Church, Kennington, in May 1965. I remember growing up, who used to kneel down every evening as a family with my dad. And we would recite the rosary and also recite the Ten Commandments every day. So, God help you. God help that child that fails to comply. Your conscience will kill you every day. That was the kind of upbringing. Um, Michael's father, Patrick Uluwale now late, retired National Secretary and Chief Executive of the Nigerian Red Cross Society, was the son of Pa Omanana Urimamuli from the Oshiparuli family of Akure. Our mom, Rosalie Abiyoye Urimamuli, named Polana Williams, now late. She passed two years ago. Um, I thank God that she didn't need to see this. Bobby was the apple of my mom's eye. Um, me, Polari Williams, retired principal nursing sister at the University of Lagos Health Centre, was the daughter of late George Adebeshi Polari, called to the bar at Middle Temple in England, 16th of April 1913. He was the first learned president of the highest court in Ibarland, Bobaji the Otumbaloi of Ibori and Apesi of Utoko Abeuta in his time. George Polari, as he was popularly referred to, was the first son of the great aristocrat Zachary Archibald Williams, popularly known as Zedi, Zedi in Ibarland. Michael was the first of six children born to the Otumbaloi family. He survived by his wife, Alero and children, Munisola, Okoyemi, Oluwole, and Nawiwa, four sisters, myself, Shola, Banke, Peju, Yemi, and a brother, Jide, and many cousins. Upon returning to Nigeria with our parents in the 60s, Michael attended Maryland Preparatory School in Lagos. He subsequently, he subsequently attended Iriti Primary School, Mekwen Road, Ikoli, and University of Lagos Staff School, where he completed his primary school education. Michael completed his secondary education at St. Gregory's College, Obalinde, Lagos, and Oloroke Grammar School in Ondo State. Michael returned to England in 1986 and took on a BTEC course in South East London College. He then attended South Bank University, where he attained a degree in business and was awarded a BA with honors in business studies. Michael met a Lero, a qualified solicitor and alumni of Cambridge University in 1997. They got married in 1999. Alero and Michael's sister, that's me, were roommates at the Nigerian Law School. Their union produced four beautiful children. Michael had a passion for house renovation in addition to his full-time employment, so he retrained as a plumber and heating engineer from 2005 onwards. Michael was a conscientious worker with great team spirit. He had great ideas for various business opportunities and was always thinking about how to make his family more comfortable. He never gave up on his dream that his big break was around the corner. He was very witty and a gentle giant, always quick to apologize for after a sober reflection. He loved to help and support those he came in contact with, and his door was always open to anyone in need of help, both young and old. He gave generously 
all he had, even if it meant he was not left with much at all. He hated injustice and was quick to defend the vulnerable. His family were his pride and joy. Michael had so many nicknames. What colleagues knew him as Michael, some knew him as Boiga, Bobby, Bob, Bobby Dagro, Bobby Shoko, and some knew him as Dola. He was larger than life. Bobby was so full of life, had so much energy. He was fearless. He was a great man with swag and charisma, a socialite with uncountable friends. Bobby made everyone around him feel so special, and he could make friends with any living thing. His sudden passing came as a road shock as he drove himself to work that morning of the 8th of June 2023, which has now changed our lives forever. However, with confidence, we submit to the will of the Almighty God, who knows all things. And the reason why he took my brother home. So soon, at the age of 58, Michael will be sorely missed by his family, friends, and all that ever knew him. Pray that the good Lord, salvation of those who trust in him, and hope of all who die in him, will grant Michael Udboiga eternal rest in his presence forever. Amen. I'm going to quickly read out my tribute. Thursday, the 8th of June, 2023, started as the normal busy day for me until I got that phone call from Alero that my brother had departed this world. My heart remains heavy and I'm yet to come to terms with the sad news. However, I totally submit to the merciful God because he's faithful and he gives and takes lives as he pleases. So who are we to ask God? In the early years of our parents' union, it was just them, Boiga and me, after which our younger siblings came along. We had very loving, adorable parents, and my brother was the apple of my mom's eye. She always stood at the gate of prayer for him. I have no doubt they are now united in heaven together with my dad at the feet of Jesus. I'm thankful to God my mom did not need to see her son depart this world. Although we miss her so terribly. Growing up, my brother had so much energy and kept her parents very busy. So I had to take my place firmly in the back seat. However, I could not help nudging my brother and pulling him back whenever he seemed to be taking the wrong turn. I felt <laughs> that was one of my rules in life. I was convinced part of my role in life was to keep him out of trouble for his own good and for my parents so, so that my parents would not be upset. My brother would sneak out at night to my mom's car to watch Kula and the Gang concerts. He would then return home to teach us trending dance moves after receiving a very long lecture from my dad about good behavior. He was very protective of me in an outside school and um, I was confident no one could cheat me. We had a lot of sibling fights over what was right and what was not. But no matter what, no matter what, I always loved my brother very deeply and I know he felt the same for me. My brother was a tall, handsome, confident fashionista with a swag. He had very many admirers. He was very kind, humble, pleasant, generous. He had so he had such a free spirit, so lovable and too open. He was so trusting and was always the last to notice any negative vibes around him. He could only he could make friends with any living thing 
This door was always open for anyone who needed help. It had numerous friends and made every single one feel so special. My brother's passing came as a road shock, however. I'm most grateful to the Lord for the gift of my brother and the lovely memories. I thank the Lord for blessing him with a wonderful wife in my sister, Alero. Thank you, Alero, for loving my brother unconditionally till the end and for nurturing a happy and peaceful home, no matter what. I thank the Lord for blessing the women with beautiful girls and a son. My brother has completed his race on earth and will be greatly missed. I pray that the Almighty God of all that exists and hope of all who die in him will grant him eternal rest in his presence forever. I'm about to sing a prayer to my brother. This is a prayer invoking the intercession of the mother of our true God to hand my brother over to Jesus and grant him eternal rest. I'm just going to sing this. If um, you feel, feel free to join me if you know the song. I'll sing a hymn to Mary. Mother of my God, the Virgin of all virgins, of David's royal blood, O Holy Mother Mary, as Christ your Son we pray. To grant Michael his forgiveness and guide him on his way. Rejoice, O Holy Mary, O Virgin full of grace. The Lord is ever with you, most blessed of our race. O Holy Mother Mary, as Christ your Son, we pray to grant Michael his forgiveness and guide him on his way. Thank you, Shola. So let's stand now and we will have our table. So before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Michael. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness, strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again for the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Our brother Michael has followed this lead in Christ, confident in our hope of eternal life. Let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father, and let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's Son in baptism, nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life, and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. So we ask this through Christ our Lord.
to aid in your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our mother Michael. In the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Michael in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with saints in heaven. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ, and are with you and with our brother forever. So we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now let us take Michael to his resting place.
See you.
hold your spirit on every heart. You've sent forth your word, and it's come to pass. What our fathers and mothers could only foretaste is now in our lifetime. The order of day Just receive Amen, amen Just receive Amen, amen You can just receive Amen, amen You can just receive Amen, amen Just receive Amen, amen Just receive Amen, amen You can just receive Amen, amen. Amen, amen. You are rebuilding the ruined walls. You are reclaiming your design. You descend as fire to purify. You are reclaiming your works. You prune as the thistles and the thorns fall away. So we may produce good fruit. For the harvest is here, and the Lord has said it, and he has done it. Yeshua HaMashiach, our gracious Messiah, soon coming King, told of by Prophet Isaiah. Our Lord and King, we bow before your throne. You who knew us before the beginning and called us your own, we call you Emmanuel, we are never alone. Jesus the Christ, oh how you redeemed mankind from sin, sickness and everything that held humanity behind. El Shaddai, Adonai, God Almighty, Elion, Elohim, humble Rabboni. Righteousness is you, Jehovah, Sidkenu, and Shama, always present whenever we need you. Aribiti Rabata, Arab Aribiti. We were gone forever, Pata Pata. But your long arm of salvation, O Lord Gogoro, rescued us, transformed us so much so that I, Holy Soul, tell me how could the great Rohi become the sacrificial lamb so he can search and rescue and all at no fee? How could the everlasting Lamb become human just so he can save me? O Yigi Yigi, superior mighty one, Ezin, the Eze, greater than every king that has or will never come. I am that I am, three in one, Holy God, Father, Spirit, Son. Jireh, you are more than enough. Akata, you are our rock, our hiding place, our strong tower. To you be glory, honor, and power. Jehovah Sabaoth fighting our battles. Allah Rabbiya, you who owns the cattle upon a thousand hills, who says and does, not just fulfilling every chapter, but every cause. Oh, opening prison doors, shutting open ones, became a sacrifice so we can be called sons. Onishe, Yanu, God of awesome wonders, with you we don't. Okay. 
Favorite child. Um, 